it's so important to remember that your application is made up of grades, but there's so many other parts that make up your application. The admissions test, so UCAT or BMAT, your personal statement, your work experience, your interview. There's so many other aspects to the application that you need to take into consideration. So by that, I mean, if you do not have the grades you need, it is not the end of the world. There are always options. There are so many different routes into medical school and it's just very important to work smart and work to your advantage based off what your strengths are. Hello everybody. So if you don't know me, my name's Amelia and welcome to my channel. So I'm a second year medical student and I've just started back at medical school this week actually. So that would explain the eye bags under my eyes right now. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what to do if you don't get the grades you need and how to go about it to make sure you get your place in medical school. The typical requirements to get into medical school are three A's at A level, and you usually need to have chemistry and biology, but it's very important to check each medical school's criteria because they are all different on what subjects they want. And you need to have five grades at GCSE being a minimum of sixes or Bs depending on where you're sitting your GCSEs. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So let's start with an obvious one. Taking a year out and reapplying. You can do this if you don't get the grades you need or if you don't have the right A-levels or even if your predicted grades are low. Some medical schools actually give out their offers based on predicted grades as long as you do get the grades you predicted. But obviously your predicted grades don't define what you are actually going to get in your A-levels. So even if you have low predicted grades, it doesn't mean that is what you're going to get. You can do so much better. So I would definitely consider applying to medical school even if you do have lower predicted grades just to chance fate and you know you never know what's going to happen so if you don't apply you're definitely not going to get in but if you do apply at least you still have the chance of getting in so as i said if you are wanting to take a gap year definitely do that but if you're thinking about taking the gap year because you don't think you're going to get in based off your grades definitely just chance your luck and apply anyway because you know worst case scenario you do have to take the gap year but best case scenario you get in and you don't have to take the gap year unless you obviously wanted to so that's my first point the second option is to apply to medical schools that weight the admissions test highly so the UCAT or the BMAT so as I mentioned in a lot of videos, your application is made up of many, many different parts. You've got your UCAT or the BMAT, you've got your personal statement, you've got your interview, you've got your work experience, you've got lots of different aspects that make up your application. So if you have lower grades than you need to get into medical school, apply to medical schools that await your UCAT highly. Most medical schools give out points for different parts of your application in order to decide who has an interview. So if you apply to a medical school who gives more points for the UCAT than another medical school, you are more likely to get more points if you've got a higher UCAT score and therefore you're more likely to get an interview for that medical school. With this being said, it's still very important to make sure you meet the minimum requirements for that medical school because if you don't meet the minimum requirements, despite you having a good UCAT score, they won't look at any more of your application. So definitely make sure you thoroughly check the entry requirements for the individual medical school you are applying to. The third option is to take a gateway year or a foundation year. So when I applied to medical school, I had no clue that this was even a thing. Genuinely, I either just didn't do my research very well or it was just not very well spoken about and not very researchable because I had no clue that this is a thing. So a gateway year or a foundation year is essentially an extra year of science before you start medical school. And this is actually done with the medical school you are going to be proceeding your medical degree with. So it's just an extra year before you start the five year degree. Medical schools often offer gateway years for people with reduced grades or people who have struggled to get into medical school for some reason. They often take an AAB, but I think some medical schools do take an ABB. So definitely do your research. So some medical schools that offer a gateway year are Holyoke Medical School, Aberdeen, Leeds, um, Bristol. A lot of medical schools actually offer a gateway year. So if you just Google medical school gateway year, so many will come up because a lot of them offer a gateway year. And it's also known as foundation year as well. Every gateway year at every medical school is different. 
and they are teaching different things so definitely do your research on that as well because you might enjoy one year of study more than you would the other year of study at another medical school the fourth option is to reset your a levels so I have touched on this a little bit at the start of the video, but I just wanted to discuss it a little bit further because often it isn't as straightforward as resetting your A-levels. So if you are planning on resetting your A-levels, it is essentially meaning you're going to have to take a year out. And a gap year is never a bad thing. I thoroughly enjoyed mine. I had an absolute great time and I actually didn't want to take it at the time, but I wouldn't go back and change that now. I had an amazing time and I would do it again and again and again. However, the only thing with resetting A-levels is it does limit your options and it does limit your choices of which medical schools you can apply to. Not all medical schools allow resets. Some medical schools do allow resets. Some medical schools have certain circumstances where they allow resets. And some medical schools only allow one reset or two resets or allow you to bump up from an, a B to an A. So it's very dependent on the medical school. When I was applying, I actually wouldn't have known that medical schools don't take resets. It's not always a common fact that everybody knows. And this is why I just want to stress to you to make sure you do your research on each medical school because they are all so, so different. So some other options I would like to quickly name drop if you are struggling with getting into medical school with your grades would be an access to medicine course, studying abroad, applying through postgraduate. There's lots of different options. I'm not going to go into it too much because I do have a video on different routes into medicine that is definitely worth a watch if that's something that's interesting to you. The last option that I'm going to mention in this video would be to apply to medical schools that accept low grades. And in this part, I'm actually going to mention specific examples of medical schools that do accept low grades. So stick around to watch that if you are interested. Medical schools are so, so different and they all have a very different criteria. Some medical schools will accept reduced grades if you firm them as your first medical school of choice. For example, they would accept an AAB potentially if you were to put them as your first choice medical school. Some medical schools will allow you to drop a grade if you have a higher grade in another subject or you have an extra grade. For example, if you had an A star, AB, or if you had an AAB and then an A in your EPQ, they would allow you to drop a grade in the one subject. So that would be your B if you're picking up a grade in another subject. So let's get into the medical schools that do accept lower grades or give a lot of points for your UCAT so you'd be more likely to get an interview. I just wanted to mention that I am going to be focusing on mainly A levels in this video and universities that accept lower A level grades but I will be putting the links below for all the universities I'm gonna mention so you can look at their specific GCSE requirements too. So with that being said, let's get into the next part of the video. So the first medical school I'm going to be mentioning, and hopefully I pronounce it right, is Brunel Medical School. So this medical school actually accepts an AAB at A level. So in their entry requirements, they like you to have biology or chemistry. And if you only have one of these subjects, your second subject needs to be a science or maths. So applicants are ranked according to the UCAT score and the highest ranking applicants are invited for an interview. However, it's not clear what the average ranking UCAT score is based on their website. They do not use GCSEs for the minimum requirements, but they do require you to have a B or a 5 in maths to progress in the application. So this is a very good medical school to apply to if you have lower A levels and lower GCSEs, but a strong UCAT score. The second medical school I'm going to mention in is the University of Buckingham, and they accept an A, B, B at A level. However, with a little bit of a twist, they don't actually use the UCAT or the BMAT as their admissions test. They have their own admissions test that you have to sit once you progress in the application. This was news to me because I actually had no clue that you could apply to any medical school in the UK if you didn't have a UCAT or a BMAT as an admissions test. But apparently there are a few, there are a handful of medical schools that you can apply to with no UCAT or BMAT. So that was honestly news to me. So it has to be news to some people. Maybe that'll help at least one person because I had no clue about that. So as I said, they don't use the UCAT or the BMAT. They use their own test, which is the multiple mini assessment test. It would be a good medical school to apply to if you do have lower A-levels 
and you also struggle with the UCAT and the BMAT, definitely one to apply to if those two things are what you are struggling with because they are essentially the biggest part of the application. So definitely want to research. The third and final medical school that I'm going to mention in this video is Kent and Medway Medical School. So the application process for this medical school is different depending on what stage of your academic life you're at, whether you are pre-A level, post-A level, pre-degree, post-degree, it's different depending on which stage of your academic life you're at. So it's definitely one that you'd need to research yourself to see whereabouts you are in your academic career and go down that route for that medical school. I'll put the table on the screen now so you can see what I mean because there's just so many routes for this medical school it really confused me. So what I can gather from this medical school is that they don't accept predicted grades so whatever qualifications you currently hold is what the application goes off. So if you are in the middle of doing your A-levels it'll go based on your GCSEs or if you're on a gap year and you've not done a degree it'll go based on your A-levels or if you've got a degree your degree plays a lot into it as well with the points and how likely you are to get an interview but from what I can gather if you have sat your A levels and you are on a gap year for example and you currently hold your A levels as your most recent qualification they accept an AAB for your A levels and it can include chemistry or and biology but if you don't have both you need to have a third science or maths as your second option. They have a minimum UCAT score of 2470 and you have a minimum situational judgment band of so if you have lower grades, you have a UCAT score of 2,470 and a minimum score of 3 in your situational judgement band. This is definitely a medical school to consider and do research on when thinking about where to apply. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope it's been helpful. If you are struggling with it, pop me a message because I can try and help you wherever I can, if I can, but I'll do my best. So if you're struggling, just pop me a message and I'll do what I can. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, I would really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.